The next key idea is that there are two different types of materials, insulators and conductors. Both of these types of materials start with atoms of roughly the same structure. So we have a nucleus, and I'm just imagining that I have a piece of each when, as I'm drawing this, and I just have four atoms, so it's an incredibly small piece. So I'll draw the nucleus in red, and then the nucleus is surrounded by core electrons. Where it gets different is in the valence electrons. If I have a rectangular piece of the insulator, I'm just going to use this black line to sort of represent the outside of it. The major difference between the insulators and conductors is that the valence electrons are free to move anywhere within the material of the conductor. In a conductor, electrons can easily move to carry charge through the material. And it's this idea of moving to carry the charge that creates an electric current. And again, there's a lot more on that later. A huge part of the course is all about electric current. But first we talk about electrostatics. Now that doesn't mean that we don't look at conductors. We just look at cases where the charges can move, but they don't necessarily move in electrostatics. One of the first questions that comes up is how do things get charged? So one way that things can be charged is through conduction. And conductors can be charged just by touching. So if you have a neutral object, you can charge it by touching it with a charged object. So for example, if I have a block of metal and then I have a plastic rod that I'm reaching in with, if the plastic rod has a certain negative charge, and I'm trying to be careful to actually draw 16 negative charges here because remember charge is quantized and you can count them. So I want to make the example represent that. If I touch the plastic to the metal, then some of the charge will actually be donated or transferred from the plastic to the metal. If I then take the plastic away, the charges that were given or donated from the plastic to the metal will actually stay on the metal. Now, the charges stay on the metal, but they don't actually stay in the same place because the metal is a conductor. So what happens is that, remember, there were four charges there before. Those four charges are going to redistribute themselves. And because they're all the same sign, in this case they were negative charges, they're going to repel each other and keep pushing against each other. They're just continuously pushing against each other. So if I look at, say, the bottom left and the top left, then there will be a force on the top left from the bottom left going upwards, and there will be a force on the bottom left from the top left going downwards. And there will be a similar force for the charge in the upper right. Now if we imagine there are only four electrons extra, that this was a neutral metal object, except for these four electrons that it just got from a charged plastic rod, then each of these four excess electrons is going to feel an individual force from each of the other electrons. And the net effect then is that they each get pushed into their own corner. They get as far away from each other as they possibly can within the limitation of the material. They're not actually allowed to leave. It's not possible for them to leave the material. Another key idea is that charge is conserved. So when an object gets charged, there must be a transfer of electrons. Another way that objects can get charged is by rubbing. And insulators work best for this, but insulators can be charged by rubbing. When two materials are rubbed together, one material donates electrons to the other. And this brings us to the idea of the triboelectric series. So the triboelectric series here of glass, human hair, paper, steel, rubber, styrofoam, and Teflon is really just a very short list from a longer triboelectric series. And what's important is not whether something is positive or negative. In fact, in the um, list where I got this, they mentioned steel was actually neutral. So it would be like a zero charge. But that's not really the important thing. What matters is the relative position of two objects or two materials on the list. If you rub two materials together, then the material that's higher in this series donates electrons to the other. And I've seen a lot of students mix this up. It's really easy to mix this up and to think that, well, if I rub glass with anything, glass will become positive. And the way I've written this with glass at the top, that would be true. But if you were to then say, well, if steel is neutral, then rubber must be negative. So if I rub 
rubber against Teflon, then they both get negative. And that's not true. Because remember, charge is conserved. And whenever there's a transfer of charge, then there has to be a transfer of electrons. So if you were to take rubber and Teflon, for instance, because rubber is higher in the triboelectric series, it basically means that it's more likely to lose electrons when it's rubbed with Teflon. Teflon is more likely to retain the electrons. So Teflon, between rubber and Teflon, Teflon would actually become more negative and the rubber would become more positive. Another aspect of this is that the distance between two materials in the series also has an effect. So the effect of transferring electrons is stronger for materials that are farther apart in the series. For example, when we compare rubber with Teflon, we had said that rubber would become more positive and the Teflon would become more negative. If we were to instead, instead of choosing rubber and Teflon, if we were to instead choose human hair and Teflon, then the effect would be much stronger. The Teflon would still become more negative, but the human hair would actually become much more positive for the same amount of rubbing as the rubber would have been if we had the rubber uh, rubbed against the Teflon. So again, the location in the triboelectric series does not determine whether something is positive or negative. It's really the relative positions. Human hair is higher than Teflon. It's closer, more positive, And that tells us that the human hair is more likely to give up electrons than Teflon. Teflon is more likely to keep electrons. So if we rub those two things together, the Teflon just has a field day collecting electrons. The human hair loses electrons, which is what makes it more positive.